Welcome to Opare EV. Uh, this is just a short little introduction. I mean, it should be short, it's probably longer than I want it to be, but anyway, to, to really cover everything, you, I mean, you gotta say a lot. So anyway, here's my cars. So I have a 2022 Model Y, bought it brand new, Opare. And I have a Model 3 Performance that I bought used so there was two reasons for buying uh, for well first of all i wanted a model 3 performance okay so buying it used made more sense it'd be cheaper in addition to that it came with fsd on it so i get fsd for much less than the twelve thousand that if you're buying a new car you pay for it so there you go these are my two cars i do have a tesla wall charger although i have a tesla wall charger it has a j1772 on it um, orig originally I thought my second car would be a, a dune buggy um, for those of you who know it is Myers Manx they were on their way to making electric uh, dune buggies and so I was thinking about getting that so that's why I have a mixed setup <clears throat> along the way I kind of realized well what I really want is a second car and what I really wanted is a Model 3 Performance, so that started stirring me that way. Okay, so you might be sitting there saying, obviously, Ray has a bias. Okay, I'll admit, I have a bias for me personally. I believe in having a Tesla car, okay? But not everybody has that, okay? Different people have different needs, different desires, so on and so forth, right? For some people, it's, it's I'm dyed in the wool American, I gotta buy a GM or I gotta buy a Ford. And that's cool, I mean, I'm okay with that. Um, you know, Chevy actually makes the best EV pickup, I mean, the best range anyway, EV pickup right now. Now it's only available to fleets, but that there's that. Ford actually makes what most people say is the best cruising pickup truck. Now, there is a catch to all this, right? You have a pickup. What do you use it for? To drive the work and back? Those trucks are getting like two miles per kilowatt hour. Both of these cars, now, not on the highway. On the highway, it's more like three and a half. So on the highway, at 70, 75 miles an hour, 80 even, it's, the, these cars make around three and a half miles per kilowatt hour. Okay? Around Lago Vista, depending on whether I'm going into town or I'm going back home, I'm getting better than four miles per kilowatt hour. And so for me, miles per kilowatt hour is a statement of similar to MPG, okay? Except the uh, energy unit is actually much smaller than gas, so to speak. Depends how you look at it. Okay. So sorry i went from why i'm not biased to why i'm biased okay so that's why i'm biased there's two reasons why i'm biased one is energy efficiency the second reason is the charging network now we're, we're most most manufacturers have made a deal with tesla to change <laughs> the that bias all right so ford and rivian already can use Tesla or some or many super Tesla superchargers, but not all of them. Okay, so there's that part. Okay, so that's a slight introduction to how I feel about the cars. To me, Tesla makes the most sense. Does it make the most sense to you? It depends upon what your values are. Okay, so just because it's right for me doesn't mean it's right for you. And that's the only fair way to look at it. Okay, so. There, it is, there's that, there that is. So what I'm really trying to do is make this boring. So many people are so, oh, 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 so excited about, well, you know, I have to, I have to, well, to, to pick on, uh, on a couple that talked to me and, and uh, Katie. They're, they're, they're asking basic questions, okay? How far can you go? Okay, so I can... I typically would go 100, 140 miles per, per charge, okay? 
So yes, that that is a drawback, if you want to call it that, of the Tesla approach is once you start getting over 50 uh, 50 percent full of the battery, the charging rate's starting to fall off. You might as well move on to the next one, which is different than the Ford F one fifty Lightning, where you must stay there until you get eighty uh, percent charge into your battery. Right? I mean, it's keep it's a from what I've heard, it's a pretty flat uh, charging curve. So that's what it's about is the charging curve. Okay. Now, how long does it take me? Fifteen to twenty minutes per charging stop which actually is a not, not much. Now, why am, okay, why am I okay with this? When I drove my diesel car, which actually is a Volkswagen Jetta TDI. Yes, it was a diesel gate car. Um, I, always saw, I always wanted to stop once an hour. So like when you're going through Tennessee, they have rest stops, you can do that. In Texas, it's it's a little bit harder to find reasonable, reasonably spaced rest stops. Okay, but that's my approach to driving. Get out, stretch your legs, fret, get some air into your lungs, and then continue driving. Don't drive, don't drive five hours straight staring straight ahead. Okay, for me that would put me to sleep. Yes, so. I get it. Some people say, oh, I do that. Okay, fine. Whatever. I'm not going to argue with you about what you can do or what's safe for you to do. Okay? But that that is, to some people, that is the drawback. <clears throat> that every couple of hours you got to stop for 15 minutes. Okay? I mean, whatever. Peace and harmony. Now, what, what the real advantage of either one of these cars is, is if you're just commuting into work, no, you're not. I'm saying, yes, I can go. I've been to Massachusetts several times. I've been to California, I think once. I've been to Florida once or twice, I forgot. But so that's not a problem. Is it an advantage? No, it's about a wash. Co energy cost wise it's about a wash so then you're stuck with talking about how many extra minutes are you taking up in your travel time to stop and charge okay as opposed to how often do you have to change your oil in your ice car or your gas car okay whatever like i said this is about just getting the facts out there making it boring Getting past the drama, make it boring. So then it comes down to, hey, if, if you can handle switching, here's how you do it. And if you're one of those people who can't handle switching, stay with your gas car. I mean, here in Texas, yes, we have the good fortune for of having gas refineries here and having a good source of oil. Although I heard a story about we actually ship our oil overseas and buy oil from other people because our refineries can't handle, handle the oil that we produce in America. Okay, whatever. Not intended to be a political statement. Please don't take it as such. Let's just move on with it. I'm just, go look at the facts. I, I'm not going to say I know the facts. I just heard it. Okay, and you know what? I don't use gas, so what turns it make to me? Yes. Both of these cars are the only two cars I have, period. Okay. And you already know by now that I used to have a Volkswagen Jetta TDI. Sports wagon, actually. Yes, I loved that car. Nice, nice ride, nice performance. And right away, when as soon as I say sport wagon, you, you should know that I prefer station wagons over <laughs> SUVs. Is this an SUV? We can argue about it. Okay, fine. But I will tell you on the Texas title, it says LL. LL means it's an SUV, period. Okay, onward, upward, charge. All right, so anyway, like I said, my goal is to make this boring. I don't want excitement. I want everything to just work. Of course, it never just works if you wait long enough, right? But I'd rather be boring. So there it is. That's the purpose. Um, it's why I'm here. 
Um, it, for me, it's fun. I, it's something to do, right? That's <laughs> anyway, it's something to do. All right. So there is a group of people who follow my channel and they're interested in VinFast. And there's another group of people who are interested in cars in general. So I try to cover that, but you'll find a large majority of content on my channel is done with grandpa running FSD. Okay. And right now at this moment, in this moment, and what is it? It's March 30th, 2024. I have FSD version 12.3. And I look forward to a couple of months from now saying, oh, how quaint. He had 12.3. Okay. I think, I think the future's there. It's just how long will it take? Okay. Does that mean you shouldn't buy a Ford with Blue Cruise? No, I'm not saying that. Um, I've heard various people say that they really liked using Blue Cruise and Blue Cruise has gotten better. But I like my FSD better. But anyway, whatever. To each his own. So what else do you need to know? Uh, I also have a channel that were uh, not channel, uh, a playlist. I have a playlist where I do, I try to document trip things. Like I recently was up to the Wright Brothers thing up in North Carolina, which was really cool if you're into that kind of history stuff. So there you go. Onward, upward, charge. Um, yeah, let me come back to that. Okay, so here's my Tesla wall charger. You will see that it has a adapter on it. So there you go, there is that. Um, yes, I love using my wall charger. It makes things short and easy. Oh, and this is my little cheat sheet. So when you get asked questions, well, what does all this mean? So the 120 volt, which is actually a portable charger, you're putting in one to two kilowatts per hour or adding six miles per hour and runs at 12 amps. Um, with the portable charger, I can plug in the dryer outlet, my 240 volt, it can add 22 miles per hour or six kilowatt hours, six kilowatts per hour and it runs at 24 amps. This wall charger can add 44 miles per hour or 11 kilowatt per hour runs at 48 amps so anyway I, I, it's when you get asked these questions so uh i came up with this cheat sheet all right so some of you may have the question of well what kind of experience does ray have with cars and i actually did a list of them one at one time <laughs> which kind of surprised me not really but it kind of surprised me so i've had various cars over my lifetime i'm I'm a retired guy, so I've been around for a while. So my first car, well, well I'll start here. The, where I learned to drive was driving farm tractors, okay? Yes, I grew up on a farm. I mean, the early days was on, actually on a farm. And in later years, my, fa my father grew, worked for a research farm. So we borrowed their tractors to work on our property. It was uh, nine acres. To, to, you know, move dirt, that kind of stuff. All right, so that's where I learned how to drive, was on a tractor. Okay, the first car my parents let me drive, and that's because my mother had moved on to a small, it's actually a Toyota, um, Corolla. Um, anyway, so my first car that I drove to school was a Buick. <laughs> Uh, was it a Buick? It was it an Oldsmobile? I forget. But either, either one. I think we had both of them at various times. Uh, anyway, an uh, Oldsmobile Vista Cruiser with a 455 cubic inch V8 and a four barrel. And the reason for that was to have the power to pull a trailer. So we had a pop-up trailer. So when we went out to visit places in the summer, we would camp out in various places on the way and on the way back. Okay. Yeah, that thing would burn out. Not exactly the best car to give your teenage son. <laughs> okay. But that's where I started from, okay? Um, and so 
the first car I bought for myself was actually an English Ford Cortina, I think it was. Anyways, a four on the floor, four, four cylinder, um, burned oil, but it was my car. I paid for it. Okay. There you go. Um, various cars I've had ever since. So I, my first real car, if you want to call it that, that I bought for myself was a 76 Firebird, uh, 352 barrel, um, which was a nice car. I loved the, I loved the car and you know, it always felt like I had more power than they're admitting to, but whatever it was, it was fun. Um, and I really like that car. Yeah. Oh man. But eventually it wears out, right? That's the way it goes. Um, in between I've had, I had I actually had a Pontiac T1000, which is a stupid little car. But it was a manual, so I'm the, I was the only one that could drive a manual, so it was mine. There was no doubt about it. Okay, I've had um, I had some Ford, for a sedan, four four door sedan piece of junk. I've had a couple of Chevys, che, Chevy sedan. So the Chevy Celebrity was actually one of my favorites. I mean, it wasn't powerful. I mean, it was a V6, so it had some power, which to me was probably too much. I mean, it'd be better if it had a four-cylinder, but because I had the V6, it could pull a trailer. Um, that car just lasted. Okay. The last Chevy I had, <clears throat> I want to say it's a Corsica. I'm not sure if that's exactly the name. But it was the last year that plant was going to be in operation and it turns out the head gasket blew and the Chevy dealer's trying to say, Oh, that's normal, normal maintenance stuff. Okay. So I'd suck it up and pay for fixing the car. But right then, as soon as you said that, um, I forgot which Chevy dealer it was, but anyways, one of the Chevy dealers here in Austin area. As soon as he said that it told me Chevy didn't care about my business with the Ford I had. It also had some problems. Although to be fair, it was a Hertz rent a car before I bought it. Um, so Ford convinced me that they weren't worried about quality. Now, am I talking about this current uh, status? I, I don't know. I haven't followed that close. I'll let you decide. But when you do those kind of things to me, I tend to go like, Maybe I should move on. Okay. Um, to, to fast forward a little bit, eventually I got a Volkswagen, a Volkswagen TDI, uh, a Jetta TDI sport wagon. And that was my first semi-luxurious car. That was really nice. I liked it. And yes, it it had been, I'd had it for... Uh, 12 years. All right. So at the time I bought it, I was doing Iron Man stuff, which means you travel and you travel with a bunch of junk, right? So you need space to carry all that junk with you. So that's why I had that car and it got 40 miles per gallon. At least that's what they advertised. Um, it wasn't far from that. It's just, you know, when you're driving 75 miles an hour, it's not going to do 40 miles per gallon. Okay, whatever. Beast and Yes, I really like that car. I uh, also have a Tiguan. Or however you say it. I, I never learned how to say that word, actually. So somewhere in here, I had two unusual vehicles. One of them... So I was looking for a Porsche 944. But Porsche 944 hadn't been sold for many, many years. I think they last sold them in 1986. Is that when it was? Okay, so the idea of having a used car that needed a lot of maintenance was not on my list. So I eventually came across this Porsche 911 or 911 uh, in Dallas. It was for a price I could afford. It sounded interesting and, oh, well, I'd have a Porsche. Yeah, baby. 
to be fair, I mean, yes, there was some squirrels or whatever got up into the motor and chewed up the, the wires, which was actually covered by insurance, but it was like, oh. So that was my, that was the maintenance thing I had to do, right? And there's a few other things like one of the window window switches didn't work correctly, but they replaced that, no big deal. Um, I mean, after all, when I bought it, it was an old car. It was 1999, I forgot what year did I buy it, 2010? No, I bought it much earlier than that. I forgot exactly when I bought it, but I mean, it was like, oh yeah, this is great, love it. And then I had, I also had a Ford uh, F-250. So I felt like I needed a pickup and I wanted a diesel because at the time it was like, well, if you have diesel, diesel fuel will last longer. So if there's a zombie takeover, whatever you want to call it, you at least have something that can handle those things. Okay. And so that, that truck was like that. But the main reason for the truck was to, when you had to carry stuff, you had a truck to do it, but you don't use it for daily driving. Okay. So there you go. Those are my cars leading up to when I got this Model Y and then this Model 3. Okay. Actually, the Jetta was the last thing that was sold to help pay for this Model 3. So there you go. There's, there's my history when it comes to cars. Okay. So when I was young, so I was born in New York, out of Long Island. My uh, father's family had, uh, they, well, they used to have a potato farm. I'm not sure exactly what, the, how the history goes, but so grandpa sold his farm. And I think they took part of the money and bought another one further out east, which is the farm I grew up on or whatever. Um, so anyway, here we are, here's this thing here. All right, so. We moved when I was six, we moved to Vero Beach, Florida. I actually grew up, so I grew up in Florida, basically, Vero Beach. So that's where I went to uh, first grade through high school. Yes, so that part of me, the almost surfer dude mentality, that's who, that's part of who I am, yes. Not that I'm a surfer, I've never been a surfer, but that's how I grew up. I got used to not having a real winter or winter was it got down to 55 degrees. So you had to wear a jacket and you could see your breath. But other than that, it didn't get really cold, almost never. Although after the, after we moved, yes, there was a freeze that came through Florida and froze a lot of orange trees and citrus trees. Anyway, there you go. There, there's that part of it. Okay, right up until I moved to Texas and in Texas, I went to college and then I got a job. All right, so let's pick up from college, right? So I've been to one junior college, which is Texas Southmost College. And I've been to Pan American University, which doesn't even exist as Pan American University anymore. Um, it's kind of funny, right? When we were at school, UT was trying to take us over, or somebody was suggesting or something, and we as the students were at dead set against it. No, we're separate from UT, and we're proud of it. Roll, roll forward a bunch of years, and now what used to be Pan American University is now known as University of Texas at Rio Grande Valley. It's the same buildings, just different name right so anyway whatever it, it's that you that's anyway the school's still there all right so i came out of that school with a what was it mis management information systems okay i mean that's so computer program business computer program to be fair not not the computer science guy no i wasn't that guy i was about creating applications Okay, coming out of school, I went to work for IBM up here in Austin. That's how I got to be in Austin. Um, I did have another choice. I could have went to work for JCPenney in Dallas, but um, 
I felt like IBM was a more long-term thing to do. I could retire from IBM. At least that's what I thought at the time. Well, you know, things change. Okay. I got caught up in, in one of the uh, restructuring moves or whatever you want to call it. And I eventually was uh, laid off. Had the good fortune of finding a job with TxDOT, Texas Department of Transportation. Gradually moved into, so there was no DMV at that time. It was all part of TxDOT. Um, so anyway, I ended up working for registration and tile system. And that eventually, when they formed the Texas Department of Motor Vehicles, that be, the my unit became part of the DMV. That's how I got to be. With, so I worked for the DMV. Yes. So part part of what you see when you go into a DMV office in, in Texas, actually it's not DMV office, it's a county tax assessor collector who handles all, all that stuff. But I helped develop the system, the software that runs those systems. There you go. That's that's my claim to fame. I mean, I have other claims to fame, but that that's why I know so much about DMV, right? Because <laughs> I work for the DMV. Um, yes, they have changed somewhat, but DMVs are not fast-moving organizations. Even if they have political pressure to do so, it, it's still not fast. Okay, whatever. So that's my background. Yes, I did eventually make supervisor over one of the application units. So, and I retired from there. Yeehaw. I mean, it would have been nice to stay a couple more years, I guess, but just had a feeling it was time for a change. So I changed. And then for uh, two or three years, I forgot exactly how long it was, I worked for a uh, Gold Star Transportation, who ran the school buses for uh, Lago Vista, along with some other places. But I mean, they're, they're actually a nationwide. It's actually, they're in Canada too, so international organization that runs school bus transportation for school districts. Okay, and while I was there, I became a trainer. So wow. <laughs> so that's part of my background. Okay, I study stuff. I pick up on stuff. Am I the smartest guy in the world? No, I'm not going. No way, I'm going to claim that. And definitely, if you test my math skills, I mean, you've already seen the videos. Like, uh, wait, I don't, I don't know. Like trying to compute uh, four and a half miles per kilowatt hour. Yeah, yes, that's what that 260 whatever it is. That's what it works out to be. Okay, whatever. Peace and harmony. So that's that's part of how I got to that point, and then. Uh, looking at the future so to be fair for those of you who follow the channel have seen big turkey on some of my videos <laughs> so she's actually my goddaughter's daughter but i i act as as one of her grandparents so okay and then i have i actually have an actual grandson with my daughter uh luke i don't have i don't have a cute nickname for him so it's just luke but um so I have a couple of grandkids and thing, looking forward to the future is like, well, why are we using gas? Isn't there a better alternative? So here's a better alternative. There are those people, there are those among you would say, no, this is not a better alternative. Fine. Okay, fine. Um, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Let's avoid negativity part of that and just move on. But if you're curious, if you're interested, Yes, my what I'm trying to do is share information here. That's why I'm here. So there you go. I try hard not to be too preachy about it. I try hard to deal with just facts. It's not always easy, but that's where I'm at. Okay. So now you know. <laughs> Hopefully, more than you want to know about who I am. Onward, upper charge. Okay, so for any of you who are wondering, yes, the point of uh, the video recording I'm doing is to be a landing page, so to speak, for my channel. Um, I hadn't done it before, but 
I guess I kind of need it so people can find a place to go. There you go. <laughs> I hope it, I hope it's not too boring. It'll definitely be too long, but hopefully y'all find it at least somewhat interesting.